We're on our way to the cave and basin and it's only a 150 meter walk so this is perfect for us. We only need to walk like five minutes because we are really tired from hiking um, the last couple of days and this morning we woke up for sunrise again so yeah this is our last day and we're ready for like a nice relaxing you know sightseeing place for our last stop before we head back into Calgary. It's a little stinky right Candy? It's a little stinky but I don't mind. I mean it's just like boiled eggs kind of and you get used to it so but if you really really hate that smell maybe this is not the place for you. From the sulfur. Yeah it's from the sulfur. They said there's like one here and then there's another one that we go through inside, the original. And the kids said that one's better. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. 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 <laughs> Oh, I smell it. Oh, and the hot. Did you did yeah. you feel it? The warmth? Yeah, I smelled that. I, I smelled it and then like this woof of like warm air just came up and it felt kind of gross. <laughs> but uh, I like this drawing right here of this man in the hot spring. He's a pretty sexy man. Yeah, I know. I was like, was he really that hot? <laughs> I look at this guy. Got a nice, it's, nice mustache. It's not the same man? No, it's not. No, oh, okay. he doesn't have a mustache. Oh. His name is... His brother. Oh, that's his brother. Oh, okay. so one has a mustache and one doesn't. In a frontier where plumbing is unknown, hot water can be liquid gold. This scent of sulfur could be turned into the smell of money if the three men could gain legal rights to the springs. Three hot men to gain legal rights to the springs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because this land didn't fix existing categories of... Okay, now I don't know why my accent is changing now. But <laughs> Disputes over rights to the hot springs brought the federal government into the fray. Of course, when money's involved. Okay, so this cave and its hot springs still lie below this hole. Look up. Accesses from the South Belvedere. That's where I guess we're yeah. going next. Oh, that's why I have to go inside. Yeah, so we're up here right now and we're looking down, but we can't see the water. So we have to go through the building to actually see it. But we won't see the hot man in there. No. Bathing. There's no hot man no in hot there. Man bathing. This looks so gross. Thermal springs, extremely fragile, home to an endangered species of snail. Do not disturb, do not swim. Mm. Although the water does look very inviting, I would think anyone who would look at it would be like, yeah, I want to swim in that. That's so gross. <laughs> I wonder if he would float. Uh. Or It does say like a lot of hot springs used for skin ointments. My skin really did feel great after I took a real sulfur hot bath. Hot springs. It's no ordinary water, just as hot water filtered through ground. Coffee beans become coffee. This stream has filtered through rocks deep in the earth to become more mineralized and slightly radioactive hot springs water. So if it's slightly radioactive, does that mean it's not hot springs for humans? I guess not. Does that mean that hot man over there that... <laughs> is he radioactive? Yeah. <laughs> so, it says some level of radioactivity is natural in our environment. So that means that man over there, the hot man's okay. He's, he's gonna be fine. <laughs> Wes wanted to see the, the hot man we were talking about, so... <laughs> he's gonna be Let's like, see his what? reaction. What? <laughs> he didn't say what. I know. He's looking at it, studying it. What about his brother? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a mustache. See, that's how I imagine the men back then looking, right? Right. But so like, he's, he's a little like, bit different. He's like Ken, the right? Doll. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think this is the guy without the mustache. He's the only one. Oh, he doesn't have a mustache. But look at the, his hands. The three prospectors who tried to stake claim on these 
hot spring, so it is them. Mm. And wow. that's the hot man. I mean, hot man. Mm -hmm. That picture looks so different. Oh, actually, he is pretty chiseled, though. He looks yeah. short. He looks very short. But his hands look like he's 80 years old. He looks slender. So this is the birthplace yes. of Canada's national parks. Yeah, that's pretty cool mm -hmm. that this is the birthplace. I'm glad we came here. Yeah, we learned something new. Learned lots of new things here. And there's a discovery trail you could take, but we're not going to do that. So we were just at the top of the cave where we were like looking down into the cave and the pool of uh, hot spring water. So now we're gonna go inside through the building to look at the actual cave and water. There's an entrance that says cave. <laughs> it's this entrance right here. <laughs> I guess we have to pay to go see this cave. We thought it was free. I thought it was free. It said free, but I guess it's free on the outside, but not the inside part. Candy's handling the money for us. <laughs> so this is to see the cave in there. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, so it's not totally free. You have to pay like three fifty for admission, right? Was that three fifty? Close to four. Well, we have we have access to the bathroom now before we leave. So, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, look at this cave um, entrance. This Indian is freaking me out. This picture. So yeah, this this face <laughs> up here is like really bothering me. Like, why? Why do that to this poor Indian man? Why paint him like that? <laughs> what says he's got a second mouth? <laughs> so, but this painting was created by artist Roland Roland Mud. Roland Mud. Roland Roland Mud. Wow, what a artist, name. Yeah. Painted in 2010 and 2011. So, this shows you how the cave formed. When the spring waters reach the surface, carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide are released into the atmosphere. The release of carbon dioxide allows minerals in the water to precipitate and form mounds of porous rock called tufa. This in turn forms sulfuric acid which erodes the tufa. The result is a cave within the tufa mound. Did you get that? That was um, that's kind of difficult. It was very difficult. Is this the caves we're at right now? Or the little entrance we're in? Yeah, it's a cave and basin hospitals, yeah. So that's, oh, that's Sulphur Mountain. That's the mountain we were on top of yes. from Banff Gondola. Yeah. It's all tying together. Mm -hmm. Who are these? Oh, okay. Who are these people? Early visitors to the cave in 1908. Go into the cave. Ooh, look, it's dark. Okay, watch your head. Okay, watch your head. Okay. Wow, can you imagine if you stumbled across this? I know. Here it is, the magical cave. Oh, that's what we were looking up from up there. And then those guys threw a rope down and they were like climbing down. And they're, like, they're like, what is this hidden gem? <laughs> What do you guys think? That's pretty cool. I liked it. I it's, liked it too. Yeah. It was very informational and the end result was like, like, ooh, this is a nice surprise. It is. I like all the pictures they showed. Yeah. And, and then I'm like, oh, I can imagine them like climbing down that road. Yeah, it's like we were there. <laughs>
Ooh, what is that? Joe, is that real? It'd be nice to like come back and yeah. go to Jasper and the other places because I did I did want to check out Icefields Parkway but I just didn't have enough time. No matter how many times I look up on a clear dark starry night I can't help but feel overwhelmed by the awe and the beauty of what surrounds us above. Mm. Very nicely put. Ryan Bray. the bubbles from the hot spring. You can see the sand where it's coming from. You see the oh, I just noticed that. You can see sand right down there. With it. Wow. I wonder how hot this water is. It just says warm, mineral-rich, spring-fed water. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So people used to bathe in it. Oh. That must have been fun back then. Mm. It was a Swiss-style bathhouse. It was in, wow, until 1955. Wow. So it's here for a while. So it, it turned into a pool. Mm. And due to high bacterial counts, the basin, the basin pools were close to the bathers. And then they rebuilt it to the way it was in 1887 and 1985. A nice ending to our Banff week. I liked it. It was um, it was interesting to see like how they discovered it, and then how it got into the hands of Banff National Park. Actually, the, the last part where the the natural springs, how it was a, a pool in the 1950s, was kind of interesting to me. But then they reverted it back to the original um, hot springs, and you can't use it today. But I want to know the people who swam in that back in the 1950s. If any of those people are alive today. Be kind of interesting to hear their stories. But that's what was interesting to me. <laughs> so, what did you like about the the little tour? Uh, I thought it was really cool to see the cave and um, active hot springs that nobody can actually use right now. <laughs> you can't um, even touch. You can't even touch it. Yeah. Well, actually, there is that one top in the front where you can touch the water. You can? I did not. Why are we missing these things? I think because we're reading stuff and oh. we're not really like. <laughs> So I guess there is a section where you can touch the water. We just right. missed it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I thought um, it was like way more informational than I thought it was going to be. I thought, you know, we would just be here for 30 minutes and then leave. But it was actually, we stayed for about a full hour. It was really interesting. So yeah, I, I highly recommend it if, you, if you're if you in Banff and you're looking for stuff to do.